In this video, we're going to be looking at problem set 8, question 1, part B, where I ask you to state the linear regression equation using the SPSS output, and I ask overall, is this a useful regression model? Test and interpret the coefficients if appropriate. So when we look at this output, the coefficients table from SPSS, we see we have the values of our coefficients. So our regression equation would look like y hat equals, we've got b0 given by the constant term here, so that's 33.205 plus b1, this is the coefficient for the age of the player, which is our x1 variable, what we've called x1. So b1 is negative, so this is point negative 0.595x1, and so on. So this is x2, this is our coefficient for x2, so that's b2, and the coefficient value is 6.329x2. The next one is negative, so it's negative 0.110x3, plus 0.461x4 minus 0.052x5 minus 0.085x6. So that's our regression equation for the model that predicts, is looking to predict the points earned by a player by the six factors or independent variables as listed in this table. We want to know if this is a useful model. So is this model useful? Well, when we looked at the scatter plots, and we'll look at the points scatter plot, the team points scatter plot plotted against the points earned by the player, and we saw that there was a very low R squared for this particular independent variable. So we see on the, the line that's been fit that the slope is, is quite a gentle slope. And in fact, maybe that slope is such a small value that it could actually be close to being horizontal, and when it's horizontal there is no relationship between the team points and the points earned. So if we go back to this ANOVA test, what we're doing in the ANOVA test is we're doing a simultaneous test to see if all of the coefficient values could be zero. And if they're all able to be zero, that's telling us that none of the independent variables have a relationship with the dependent variable of the points earned by the player. So if that null is um, not rejected, that's telling us there's, the model is not useful. There, none of the variables we've chosen as factors to try and predict the points earned have a relationship with the dependent variable. So our alternative in this overall F test to determine model, model utility is maybe at least one of these is not zero. So at least one of these coefficient values is not zero. And if at least one is not zero, then, and we'll just erase this, so if at least one of these is not zero, then that's saying that one of the, at least one of the variables, the factors that we've picked, have a relationship with the dependent variable. Our test statistic for this ANOVA test is, follows an F distribution, and from this table we see that we're given our test statistic is F of 68.172, and the p-value, which is called significance in this SPSS output, so that has been given as 0 0.00. So if we use a 10% level of significance, so if alpha is 10%, this is definitely less than 10%, so we would reject our null, hypothesis that tells us at least one of these coefficient values is not a zero, and that means that yes, since we rejected the null, this model is useful. At least one of these coefficients is not zero. So we go back and look at the t-test, we see that we have test statistic values in this column for each of the variables. And the coefficient values, when they're standardized, they follow a 
a t distribution, a student t distribution. So we could compare these test statistic values to a critical value to see if they're significant or not. So what we're going to do is we're doing a t-test for each of these independent variables to see if that particular independent variable has a significant relationship with our dependent variable. And each of them has a test statistic value listed in the table, and each of them has p-value associated, again, the p-value called significance in this SPSS output. And this p-value, if it's less than 10%, it has a significant relationship. So we see that this is less than 10%, this is less than 10%, this one, this one, this one, this one but not this one. This is greater than 10%. So all of these variables are significantly related to the dependent variable. Why? This is not. So this is not significant. So despite having weak relationships, some of these variables, they do have significant relationships. When we look at the beta coefficients themselves, each of the beta values tells us the average change we can expect in our dependent variable y. So the average change in y given a one unit change in our dependent variable sorry, independent variable, in xi. But we're considering this interpretation of the bi um, by holding all the others con constant. So all of the other x's, so we'll call those xj's, are held constant. So if we look at one, if for example, if we look at the salary, because that had a fairly strong, on the, the scatter plot, we, had, we saw there was a fairly strong relationship. Well, the, the, the value for that coefficient is 6.329. So this is saying for each increase in $1 million of the salary of a player, that on average leads to a 6.329 point increase in the players' points earned for that season, for 2007-8 season. And that's as if everything else has been held constant. So they're the same age, the same weight, the same number of games played. So it's, it's telling us that this has $1 million leads on average to about a 6.329 point increase by that player. And again, this is for the 2007-2008 um, season. So with the weight of the player, we saw there was a, a negative slope on the scatter plot, and we see there's a negative sign on this weight. And that's saying for each pound increase of a player, it leads on average to a negative 0.11 point decrease, or a negative decrease to the points earned by that player. So all of these values can be interpreted, but we're always interpreting them holding all the other x's constant. So in the next video, we'll be looking at part C, where we're evaluating the variability of the model.